so yes, the key that I want you to know is if you're going to try and improve your immune system, if you're going to say, I'm going to be in isolation for maybe up to two months, you could exit isolation with some of the best white blood cells you've ever had, but you have to be measuring in order to do that. There's a link in the show notes for Foracare. Uh, they actually have Dr. Ba's ratio programmed into their uh, mobile app, so you don't even have to do the math. They've been just really big supporters of uh, teaching people, promoting how to improve health, and being very supportive by giving anybody who uses the Dr. Boz um, um, DRBOZ uh, promo code, you get a 10% discount. Um, I will tell you it's uh, about $100 for the kit once you get the 10% off, and it is the best $100 to help your immune system. It is more powerful than a visit with me could be. So start with knowing your numbers. Uh, for those of you uh, engineers out there, there, is, there are show notes out there that um, a link in there called the spreadsheet. I had one of my favorite patients who built this saying, here's how he plots his, uh, his data. Uh, so you don't have to build the spreadsheet. You can just fill it in, download the spreadsheet. Uh, that is also in the show notes below. So if you love keeping track of things, um, I don't take on any patient unless they've got a spreadsheet they've been working with so I can look over time what their numbers have been. And the truth is, is once they start studying themselves, rarely do they need my help. They, they can see what we're going to do next. So I like to show this, and I, before I show you the numbers, I want you to notice these are healthy patients. These are folks that are not overweight. They do not have insulin resistance. They came from a standard American diet. They're not ketogenic, but if you watch how long it took them to get a really strong Dr. Boz ratio, we're going to show you that the glucose started at 80, went to 70, then into 60s and 50s. When they're in below that, um, I would say below 60, excuse me, below 70, in the 60s and the 50s is when I can have a high level of confidence that they are in gluconeogenesis. Um, I've had lots of people write in about that. When you look at their first, uh, first uh, check, their insulin is starting to decrease when they have a glucose of 80. Um, glucagon and epinephrine, these are things we've talked about in other, other um, lectures, uh, but they start to rise. By the time you get to those 60s, um, you're going to see their epinephrine and their growth hormone rise. I did a hormone, or I did a, uh, one of the beginning lectures and one of the chapters in the book is how to have human growth hormone, HGH, you know, the, the, the drug that athletes will use to strengthen their muscles. But how do you do this without enlarging your breasts and swelling your sex organs and messing up your endocrine system? And that is, you can do that with a Dr. Bowles ratio. You can do that with a ketogenic diet and then adding uh, time-restricted eating to this. Um, cortisol is, sounds like this bad thing because we see it ruin morning fasting glucoses, but I'll tell you it's not the worst thing in the world. You need cortisol to respond to stress. You need cortisol to respond to infections. Um, they, they got lightheaded by day five. So again, that healthy um, um, metabolism, uh, these are healthy people. They start out with a standard American diet, and notice these are hours in the first part of the, the, the um, um, chart. What they looked at was, this is glucose milligrams per hour is that first solid line. So that is not what their glucose was. It's how many milligrams per hour were they using. So they had just eaten. Um, right after they ate, that really went down. Um, the glucose coming from glycogen, which is stored glucose, is what that dotted line is. But you get to about the end of that third day, or end of, uh, excuse me, the first day, 24, 28 hours, um, and you start to see the storage in your liver really decline. You don't really get that gluconeogenesis until you get to the third day, uh, or the glucoses that are somewhere in the 60s or 50s. But again, I'm showing this, you this to compare it to people that have been overweight for years, that have had high insulin for years. These were healthy, lean patients. They were not on a ketogenic diet. These were standard American diet, and they fasted uh, for, again, the 40 days is what that, it's a really great study to kind of unpack. So you look at this um, uh, study from clinical nutrition. This was done in 2000. So again, 20 years old. This is not new data. Uh, but you watch to see what happens during the 72-hour fast uh, with these healthy patients. So glycogen and glucose are what comes out of your liver. Um, again, by 24 hours, you get a range of 61 to 69, and then uh, a glucose of 64. 
by the time you got to 72 hours, uh, you can see their glucose is now coming out of storage. They are not taking any more in. And this is how quickly you can drop that in a healthy lean patient. What I think is powerful is in those healthy lean patients, if you were measuring ketones and you were doing a Dr. Boz ratio, they would not drop their Dr. Boz ratio until you get to the third day. 72 hour fast, you can see that their, their insulin was seven to 13. Again, I, when I do this in the clinic, I love it when their insulin is less than five. So these healthy lean patients were not uh, what I would consider a good level of insulin that stayed just about the same at 24 hours and maybe a little bit less at the 48 hours. And by 72 hours, you finally had a, a, one of them at least hit 5.1, but still quite a range of insulin that did not really correct. And this is just a glimpse to say even healthy lean patients, when we're trying to improve their immune system, you have to be checking both numbers uh, to really understand. Now they did check ketones and you'll see uh, that uh, they didn't have any ketones at the beginning, as you might expect, but over 24 hours, they shot up, I think uh, it was, they hit two, yeah. Um, healthy lean patients, they don't have a lot of insulin or, glu or a lot of glucose hanging out in their liver. Uh, enough to keep the glucose um, high on that first one, but boy, by 72 hours, their, their ketones were, were 4.8, and that got them to a Dr. Bowes ratio under 20. Um, there were a few of them that made it into a Dr. Boz ratio under 20 by 48 hours, but that is the exception. Um, oh, I didn't mean to put this slide in here, but this is norepinephrine. This is kind of fun. Norepinephrine is what makes you feel so good. Some patients say, I want that high that I get when I fast. And I said, well, it, it, you got you to gotta practice making it. You're not going to get it on your first fast um, unless you get clear out to 70, and, and this is healthy people, it took 72 hours to really boost their norepinephrine but it's where this enlightenment comes from that people say, boy, I fasted and I really feel so much better. I'm like, yes, you do. And we have evidence that um, it really does change in, as you watch uh, uh, the, the numbers, but it's mostly at that 72 hour range. So here's again, 36 hours fasted. These are growth hormone. Um, again, healthy people. These are not overweight people. And it still took them multiple days to really raise their uh, growth hormone. What I recommend for my folks over the age of 50 is to not fast for longer than 72 hours. Using a ketogenic diet, using um, your Dr. Boz ratio, you can see when your bodies start to improve. Um, so here's your insulin resistance patient. Okay, so in, it took days to weeks for them to get their uh, fasting glucoses to drop below that 70 mark. So again, I do not recommend that my insulin resistant patients start fasting now until the day the quarantine is over. That's a really bad idea. There are lots of things that can go wrong and access to healthcare is limited right now. Uh, but I'm showing this to you to say, we know that it happens. We know that it's possible. And we know that you'll turn over your white blood cells every four days. But in order to, you only get to build on last, uh, your last set of white blood cells. To take your white blood cells from what Grandma Rose had at the beginning of her cancer uh, to a one that could sustain the 40 days of fasting, it took us nine months. Now, we weren't nearly this intense. We didn't even start blood checking her numbers till we'd been at it for six months. All right, so this is the, again, your keto diet, insulin resistant patients now. I don't know if you remember that chart where I had phase one, two, and three. Phase one was right after they got done eating. But when you're on the keto diet, which is, again, the reason I'm so adamant about checking numbers to see are you improving is, what is that phase two? What is, what is it looking at? And you are looking, how did you empty the, glu the glucose in your liver? Um, again, that stored sugar is called glycogen. And when you've been overweight with high insulin, you locked it inside those liver cells. You locked it inside your muscle cells. And to get it to empty can take a really long time. Uh, that process is evident by looking at your numbers. So this is where I give a lot of credence to those who uh, are, have lost the 100 pounds, have been checking Dr. Bob's ratios, really been looking at how their body repairs, um, and knowing that the reason we're doing this is you have been overproducing insulin for the better part of uh, a couple of years. Um, that process of extra sugar, every time there's a more than a tablespoon of sugar in your body, you took these little glucose on my channel. This is what glucose looks like. These are they're square and they are actually they're rhomboid, 
Um, but they're happy, sad. They're kind of like the seven dwarves. They have all kinds of emotions because glucose can make you feel good, but it all is very short-lived. Uh, its energy is rather wimpy, kind of like burning pine needles in a fire. It's really exciting, but then it crashes pretty hard. And our mood and our energy and our repair process is affected when too much sugar is around. When you take glucose and you say, hey, Mr. Insulin says you need to be tucked into uh, a cell that is um, inside the liver and inside the, um, the muscle cells. And that glycogen uh, gets packaged by taking all these sugars, connecting them together, uh, and then wrapping them into what I call glycogen bubbles. <laughs> I have a little bubble of our little glucose guys here. Um, I think, yeah. Did I put it in there? Oops, here we go, sorry. I didn't mean to do that twice. Yeah, this is what I meant to do. Well, close enough. So yeah, that little guy in the middle is, a, is glycogen. And glycogen is packaged glucose. Those glucose cannot leave the liver until you get um, your insulin down. So remember, insulin and Dr. Bob's ratio are equivalent. You lower your Dr. Bob's ratio, you lower the insulin. The reason you lose weight with a Dr. Bob's ratio of 80 or less is because you can finally open up these glycogen bubbles and use the glucose, uh, and that in and of itself becomes difficult, but you, you get to finally empty the storage that has been there for so long. Uh, when glucose is in the body, uh, we fill it full of these glycogen bubbles, and um, boy, you want to see the most gnarly looking livers. Uh, they are livers filled with glucose, almost like cirrhosis of the liver, which usually we attribute to alcohol. But most of the hardened livers today in America are from sugar, excess sugar that look just like this. As the sugars run out, then your body starts to package them into fats. And those are what those little yellow strings are. Then we start putting triglycerides all over the liver and we get a fatty liver. Fatty livers are even more diseased than um, ones filled with glycogen. But that's how it takes that, you know, almost two months to empty some of the stored sugar in these glucoses. And that is going to take at least a Dr. Bob's ratio of less than 80 before you can empty it. And that's because it fills with all that fat. That's what happens. When you put ketones in circulation, um, by just being on the ketogenic diet, dropping those carbs to 20, that's when we can start to see a lot of the chemistry changes that not only empty the liver, but this is where cytokines and an improved immune system are calculatable. All right, I think, um, I think this one gets me, yeah, that's the 12 weeks on a ketogenic diet, uh, more than 12 weeks on a ketogenic diet, and we really start to see a huge improvement in those livers. But it's because they're measuring. They're not just guessing that they're on a ketogenic diet. They really are emptying their glycogen storage. They really are using those triglycerides in a way that is a much better plan. And you get a bunch of happy ketones around is what I'm trying to show you there. <laughs> yes, so ketones are known for pouring out the flames of insulin. Um, and I think that's where I was going to stop today on that one. Without a, an improvement in your Dr. Bob's ratio, you can't guarantee that you've got an improvement in your, um, in your system. And that's really what I'm getting at, is that if you look at um, the, the best part of a ketogenic diet is that it isn't about the food. It's about the chemistry inside your body. Please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.